Brand identity is about creating a brand name, brand logo, and tagline with certain font type, typeface, font shape, and color scheme to achieve certain emotional image in the minds of the targets. It is a critical success factor in contemporary business practice because a solid brand identity will help a brand to build strong customer loyalty and industry clout. On this episode, we engage with a brand identity expert, Mr. Larry Dew, to explore his journey in the brand identity business and draw out nuggets from his knowledge and experience within the sector. Now, you like to describe yourself as unconventional. Sir. How do you mean? Well, in saying that I'm not a conventional, I specifically mean that I'm not trying to be like what people had been before. I try to be as different as much as possible. I'm not, uh, I'm not following the path of anyone. I decided to recreate and regenerate uh, to, rege to regenerate myself and my brand in, in such a way that I can be different and then I can always stand out wherever it is that, or wherever it is that I am. Since when have you been like this? Um, it actually started in uh, specifically on the 10th of March 2010. That was when I intentionally became who I am and um, I will strategize for the future that's coming. For the future that's coming. If I understand you correctly, you've not always been the way you are now. No, no, no. no. But sometimes in 2010, yes. you came to a realization that who and what you were at that time yes, was, not who I was, was inadequate yes. for taking you to where you want to be yes. in the future. Yes. So you had to recalibrate yourself. Yes, correct. And uh, that's how you, you are who you are today. Correct. So you underwent a kind of paradigm shift? Yes, I did. Specifically, okay, so. what did you have to do at the time? Okay, um, well, it, you know, it, the things that I had to do or the process that I had to go through then was to change my name, which was oh. the first thing in the process. You changed yes. your name? Yes, I did. Officially? Officially, yes. Uh, well, I wasn't born with the name that I bear today. Today, I'm Larry Dew, but I wasn't Larry Dew uh, as at uh, 2010. I, or, or I was born with the name of Olari Waiju Adewale, and I had to strategically remove the... Um, the important things in the name that I need and um, and discard yes the and discard the rest so uh, I'll still come to the name change <laughs> later on <laughs> all right sir what the, other things did you have to change yes in, um, in this your journey towards paradigm shift yes um, it, I had to uh, reevaluate myself okay because um, it's it just like I said it's a process and on some of the things I it, that I also had to do was to 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 do a list you know the people that I know really your association uh, yes <laughs> I had to to write down the people that I know and the people that uh, uh, you know have been of influence to me and uh, In look your life. At, yes and look at where I, you know, I intend to go. So you put future. up a list of your associations. Yes, I did. And what did you do with that list? And and then I started doing a match of can this person be of help to me, of where I was then to where I'm going. Okay, so you drew up a list of your associations, yes. your relatives, your siblings, yes, your siblings. friends, yes, and I your associates, yes. all of them. Yes. And then you began to take the list one by one. Yes, I did. This person would he be useful in my journey yes. towards this new direction yes. I want to go? Yes. Because if I understand you correctly, you identified in 2010 yes. that the future you envisaged, you would not get there with the mindset you carried at that time. At that time. And so you decided to have a paradigm shift. Yes. Yes. And the first thing you did was to change your name. Yes. The next thing you did was to look at your associations. Yes, Who can travel with me yes. on this journey? Yes. And how many names remained at the end of the day? Just me. You, you are not serious. You are kidding me, <laughs> aren't you? 
No, I'm very serious. So you crossed out each every, name, each you will name. evaluate it. Yes. Can this one work with me on this journey? Yes. And then you will cross it out yes. if it was not going to yes. work with you. And at the end of the day, you realize that all of your associations, 100%, no, no, you couldn't no, find no, a single person no, no, whose no, values no. align with no. where you wanted no. to be, including your no. siblings. No one. Including your parents. I have to just be sincere. With yeah, you. we appreciate sincerity <laughs> on this program. I have to be sincere. No one. And, and uh, it's actually a bitter truth, but it, it those are the points that I had to realize and you know, I had to come face to face with the reality. Because I don't want to deceive myself and say maybe in the future they might be of help or this. I had to face the fact. So at that point when I finished, and I saw myself in the center of it, then I knew that, okay, I'm in for it. And then uh, it it actually um, gave me a little bit of, you know, you, you know, the courage. I was a little bit scared, but uh, I, I had to overcome the fear and uh, I had to face the reality. And, uh, that you're going to travel this alone. That I, yes, that I had to go alone. And, um, you know, at that point, I had to do what <laughs> is very difficult for a lot of people to do. Yes. I had to delete or, or let me say I wiped. You wiped away all, my all contacts. your contacts yes. on your phone when you realized that none of them yes. was uh, going to be adequate yes. for the journey yes. ahead. That so, was ruthless. <laughs> well, I Somebody had, had to, told me that in life, if you are going to succeed, you've got to learn to be ruthless in certain regards. Definitely. You, you, so you, you were that insensitive in your decision. Yes, You I, didn't want to be sentimental. Uh, no, I didn't. Coming up. Yes. So you change who you are yeah. in terms of your name and your mindset. Yeah. And you change your association. Yeah. And then you began the journey. Yeah. The business you are into now yes, is brand building. Yes, sir. How do you operate? What else did you do? It is this your quest towards achieving paradigm shift? Well, I will say frankly, those were the three uh, main things, things I yeah. had to do. And those were, if you ask me, those are major, <laughs> yes, major things. Because your association is critical. Yes. After your mindset, the next most critical thing to your success in life is your association. association. And of course, what you know, your skill base and your know-how base. Yes. Sir. So. After you've done all of these things, yeah. you were convinced that you're not ready, ready for this journey. Yes. If I may ask you, when you said in 2010, you realized that the kind of future you envisaged for yourself, that who and what you were at that time was not going to lead you there. Yeah. What is that future that you envisaged for yourself? Well, the future that I pictured for myself is to become someone who can be of a strong influence in the business world. So I needed to choose a name that can that could be controversial. A name because usually that could gain attention. Yeah, that can gain attention. Because I and it, it, it's really strategic and it really works. Because everywhere I go now, <laughs> the name is always why is this name? So you change who you are yeah. in terms of your name and your mindset yeah. and you change your association yeah. and then you began the journey. Yeah. The business you are into now yes, is brand building. Yes, sir. How do you operate? The, um, we operate in phases of trying to know what a client wants. Okay. One. Then uh, we try to use the experience we've had with people to give them advice okay. on what we feel it should be like. It's a consultation process. Okay. And then after that, if we're able to come into an agreement with the client, and then we can go ahead with what we feel uh, of what we call execution. So. Uh, let's say, for example, we have a new brand yeah. who doesn't have anything, who is just up. about to start. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, usually startups usually have the ideas. 
yeah. and their ideas has not been tested by anything. Yeah. Because we have a little bit of experience, we can give them some idea, um, give them some um, advice. Some, some advice. And this advice, it, it goes in line with, okay, you listen to us, we listen to you, and then we are able to reconstruct what you have. Yeah. And then we can now, if it's okay, then we now go into the process of execution. So you operate like a medical doctor. You take a brief. Yes. Then you try to do some analytics Analysis, around yes, the business yes, circumstances. Yes, and then we treat. And then you, you, you give your counsel an advice. If it is approved by the yes. client, you go into execution. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, like sir. you said, your interest is in startups. Yes, sir. Why is that so? Today I can tell you that I started from zero. A lot of people don't believe they can start from zero naira. I started from zero because of the way I started. I started from scratch, like from nobody. Yeah. And uh, it's, you know, it, it made me to realize how you can start even in the rough road. You don't need loan. You don't need anything. So that means in, in so many occasions, it's better to start rough than to start with so many things. So because of your experience, you have a kind of empathy yes. for startups. Yes. And that's why your business model is you want to focus on startups yes, rather than established yes. brands. Yes. If I understand you correctly, you are more interested in brand building yes, sir. than branding. Than branding. Branding is just... For people who don't know, branding is an initial process of starting something. Okay. If you want to stand out in something, then you need the process, just one process of branding. To brand, it means you have to create your identity, yeah. your logo, uh, uh, maybe your business card. It's just one process. Yeah, but yes, it's just one process. But in brand building, yeah. it's a process of, I mean, it's a continuous process of building on what you have already established. So the identity is like the foundation. It's the foundation. In the construction of a building. The construction now starts. But isn't it said that brand is about your reputation, your impression with your stakeholders? Yes. Yes. So it's... when you want to build my impression with my stakeholders, what are the artifacts or the building blocks that you put together? There, to achieve that. There, there are so many things. We call them strategies or, or, or tactics. Okay. You put in together a lot of strategies and tactics yeah. together yeah. in order for you to, you know, to, to build your equity. We call it equity. Um, in, in branding, the most important thing that you have to focus on is your, I mean, is, is usually your overall equity. And equity, in, in the sense of, if for example, I think it's better for me to use an example so that we can get it. Let's do that. Do you know? Do, do you know of any sugar that is in cubes? Yeah. Which sugar is that? Yeah, of course, Saint something. Saint Louis. I don't want okay. to. <laughs> Saint Louis. All right. So it's uh, uh, they are built an equity in the mind of people yeah. in such a way that when you hear, you don't even need to know the They've name. They've never of advertised. Brand. They don't have as far as I but, know. But you, 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 you know. And it's the more brand. expensive than other cubes of sugar, but that's still but the that one we buy. But that is still the one. So, and then we have so many other ones. Um, if we're talking about toothpaste in those days, there is one brand. Yeah. The moment you, you mention that brand, I mean, even for now, if people want to get something or they want to get toothpaste, they use that name yeah. in place of, you know, the other one they want to buy. In, uh, other examples are bound in beverages. Beverages, you know. exactly. Yes. So they've been they've been able to build an equity, you know, around their product. So it means if you need that thing, the first thing that comes to your mind is, is that is that thing. That is branding. So you have strategies and tactics that yes, you that we yes, those are the things that which you, employ you don't to. want to disclose, but we might come back to it later. Yeah, okay. But yes, tell yes. us what your entrepreneurial journey has been like. Uh, well, uh, you said you started from zero. Yes. Today you are a very successful person. Yeah, by God's I, 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 I mean, I know that you are very successful. You want to be humble or self-effacing. <laughs> Starting from zero to the point where you are now, so, what was the journey like? Well, I would. Uh, it's it's good to to say it with one word. Um, 
the journey is is not a bed of roses. Naturally. Yes. That's what everybody says. Yes. And that's why it is anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The journey to a lot of success. people a lot of people want to be to be an entrepreneur or they see someone doing well and then they want to copy that thing and follow that thing and at the moment when things get rough they say this thing is not for me and, and then rush away. and then they run away. Meanwhile, that could just be the time the breakthrough exactly. was just around the corner. Because it's usually like that. It's always so what kind of challenges did you have to overcome? I d so many. Please mention some of them and tell us how you overcame them. I mean, you know, when I started, I didn't have equipment. So if I have to do things, I have to start the process. Let's say, for example, I wanted to do a business card now. Uh, or, I mean, for my client. Yeah. I have to go to where I can print because yeah. I don't have a printer. Yeah. And then after have printing, printing machine. Yeah. And then and then after printing, I still have to to go and do the lamination mm. and then and then the cutting. Now, no matter how good and perfect your design is, the people that will do the finishing for you can destroy your the whole beauty I totally of your agree. Job. Yeah, I've had that experience. So these are lots of the experiences I've, uh, you know, that we have faced has to do with disappointment most time because a lot of people that are handling these things are not professionals at it. Yeah. They just they have poor work ethics. Exactly. So, uh, it, so how did you takes, overcome that challenge? Well, it, um, it takes me to increase the standard that I have. And uh, in doing that, it means if I'm doing something, I have to charge the price of mistakes in it. So I have to, okay, for example, if I need to do do 10 pieces of, I mean, of a product, yeah. I'm going to charge for 40. So it means I'm going to produce 40 and give the person 10 of the best. So the way you dealt with it is to, um in your charges, yes. Proactively charge extra, yes, to accommodate to cover, to cover losses that may arise yes, from mistakes from and errors. Mistakes. And your clients were okay with that. So far, I'm able to give them what so many other people couldn't give to them. They 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 are ready to go with somebody who will give them what they want. So your strategy from the onset, yes, was to ensure that you are so good that they won't be able to find anyone that's as exactly, good as you are from around exactly, you. Exactly, that will give them what they want. Yeah, everybody wants to be so good, but not everybody achieves it. Yeah. What did you have to do to achieve that excellence? Um, I think I have good high and good taste for things. Although a lot of people thought that uh, maybe probably I was raised abroad or maybe I traveled out a lot and I, I, I have disappointed a lot of people that I've ne I have not traveled beyond Ghana. Uh, you know, so the way so I see things... So where did you train? I... <clears throat> well, the place where I train that I always tell people that they can always train where is online because so you didn't go gap, to learn under anybody no. the gap between are you kidding me no i've i so I, you're self-taught self-trained in everything that i do today so, so all I of these vocations that you are involved with today yeah because you've gone on to move from having an established branding and brand communication yeah. company yeah. to having an e-commerce company yes, that which you struggled to achieve yes. 10 yes, years ago, ago. Yes. now when you became prosperous yes. you, you, you now have the capital to launch out yes. Yes, 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 and that all of these things you learned how to do them online yes sir. so you learn how to build web, build websites online yes. how to build e-commerce sites online yes sir. without going to learn under anyone yes sir. so there are training schools on the internet that's what you're trying it's to tell us. It's not even necessarily school. Yeah, maybe like YouTube videos or yeah, something. Yeah, just videos. Videos, instructions, just do your do your basic research and practice it as you're as you know, as you're watching and then you get to to know it. We have equipment I mean in this or your states we have we have equipment that I can boast that 
no other person have them in this whole uh, um, equipment uh, for your branding. Yes, yes. Uh, brand building. Yes, for the work. brand building. Yes, we have. And uh, you know, I, you know, and I you brought this equipment in. From yes, you know, I brought this equipment in without even seeing them before. I've you never ordered seen them. them. From I ordered board. them from yes. I've never seen it. And today, you know, I operate and I train my staff on how to do it. And then we've had a lot of, you know, issues of, uh, uh, of uh, we've had a lot of technical Break. issues. Yeah. Yes. Technical breakdown. Yes. And so how do you maintain them? Just by reading the manuals you know, and looking stuff. No manual. Online. You know, the, uh, uh, I think the funniest part is that, you know, I can't um, read a Chinese manual. Because most of them comes from China. Yeah, Mandarin language. So I cannot, I can't, I can't even read it. So, but um, I do more of checking what people have been doing online. Because it, uh, anyway, I think I believe that there is no problem that is new to me. If I have a problem now, somebody else has faced that problem before. So if, if I have that belief, that means if I have a challenge, someone has solved it before. So you have a can-do mindset. Yes. You have a mindset that tells you there's nothing I nothing. can do. And I'm not bothered if you're confronted by any with, really technical issue. I've, uh, if you want to acquire a know-how about anything, you just go and do your research online yes. and get and textbooks. I, and, and I don't even read. But you've been reader. making mistakes a lot. Um, Costly mistakes. Well, I can say in the past I have, but I've learned so well. So I, you grew through your mistakes. Yes. You know, I've somebody talked about so well. failing forward. <laughs> yes, yeah, I've learned so well. So I hardly do mistakes that are costly anymore. Okay, so let's talk about this, your brand building company, which the first time I, com I came in contact with your work a couple of years ago, yes, I was astounded. I thought they were from outside this terrain. You know, and until I went on your website and I made contacts to you and I went ahead to visit your office to spy around and just see what you guys were doing. I was satisfied with what you were doing. That was a couple of years ago. Yes, sir. But I didn't think you were ripe enough to be featured on the program then. <laughs> so we had to watch you from a distance. And that was about 2014, I think. 14, yes. So for five years, we put you under our radar and we were watching and seeing what you were doing and we saw how you made progress over time sure. and evolved into this behemoth successful outfit that we all like to applaud and celebrate today. What caught my attention initially okay. when I first stumbled on your brand okay. and your, your organization some five years ago was the fact that even though you were into graphic designs, logo designs, at the time, yeah. you were doing it differently. You had online presence. You were like, you were running in like an e-commerce site. Yes, sir. Where people didn't have to see you. Yes, sir. They didn't have to come to your office. Yes, you didn't have to go to their office. Yes, they would just pick their stuffs online. You created like some shelves, you know, at that time, where people have basic, premium, you know, yes, different categories of, tell us about that. Okay. Um, At inception. Yeah. The, the the idea I have is that I try to simplify what people want because I've been there before and I understand the challenges people face. Coming up. What strategies do you adopt to market your services? Well, our marketing strategy um, um, that we started with was online. We, 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 we practically use the social media platform to promote the business. Okay. I think the first one or, or the first idea I had started with the logo designs. And I discovered that um, people have different different ideas of logo. Um, 
for for the design for the designs of logos I, I you know i discovered that there are some people who don't really know the importance of logos if i doing some design sometimes some people will just tell you just put any logo for me this is my name this is it. just put it there this is what i want for people like that who don't care there's nothing you can tell them they just don't like it okay if if that's what you want we designed a lower thing for them we have uh, we call it uh, we call it the premium for them premium so, yeah or basic premium we make them feel important usually some people will call it a lower a lower name and say something uh, you know That's something what I would have called it. yes but but again the unconventional money yes you know. make them feel important let them have a premium so we gave the name premium to it in such a way that you know everybody wants to buy good things yeah it, 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 everyone wants a premium service exactly it, it's what you give it if you give it so a, for those who just want name, a basic logo yes you call it premium premium they are even the most important because they are the ones that don't have the money to pay and for that there is no it's just a design we don't we we no put extra. in our best there's no extras there's nothing like uh, okay remove this or do so this so tell us the next class and the, well the next class is the mono uh, it's called the mono logo you know all these are for logo designs for the mono logo it usually comes with just a single color you know in the design we don't um, and y- usually there are so many people I even recommend that class for a lot of people like so many colors in their you know on their I mean on their logos okay. and I always laugh because they don't know the cost implication when they have to start activating it maybe for example you want to do t-shirt the cost of doing a single color is the cheapest than if you have to run so many colors you know on your brand Let's so it's not advisable for your logo it's not to advisable. have so many it colors. It is not. So that when you start replicating it on various uh, platforms, exactly. you won't expend you will so not much. Spend so, much. so if Shorts. someone comes to you t- to request for services of logo design, yes. how many product offerings? Because I know you've been able to bunch this into we product We have a lot. Offerings. I don't even think I can. Re- I remember like the how names many? of that. We have uh, we have close to uh, we have close to twenty five different packages. Good. I can't even remember. Tell us how. about some of these packages. Okay. Um. We have the first one is the premium. Yeah, we have the premium, which is we just the, logo design. We yes. Design the logo for you. Um, you pay us, and that's all. We have the standard package. Uh, we have the professional package. I think the professional package is is almost like I think the highest because it's a lot of work to be done for the premium. Yes, there is no choice. It's what we design that you take. But for the professional, you can make changes of uh, of, of between zero and forty reviews. Forty yes. reviews. So. You can, we can keep designing and keep giving it to you. You make your review, you give it back to us. We go and rework it. We send for a it maximum back. of 40 times. Yes, uh, for a maximum of 40 times. And then, and then aside that, you know, for now, I'm, you know, I'm only talking about the logo for yes. the logo class. And then, because that for me is the innovation that yes. attracted me first to your company. Yes. What strategies do you adopt to market your services? Well, our marketing strategy, uh, um, um, that we started with was online. We, we 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 practically use the social media platform to promote the business. Okay. We usually do a, a normal posting on the social media. We have staff who we, we dedicated for the social media. So since uh, since 2014, we have been posting you know on our pages on social media on a daily basis what do you post there we post things that has to do with with the brand uh the things that people need to know you know about let's say for example today we can pick about logo design we can talk about logo and tell you all so the you're giving people there. information free information free information yes. on branding on branding who puts those write-ups together i do that 
So you put the right up together about branding, yes. and that uh, makes people visit your page. Yes. Those who are interested yes. in. So we've been able to to have uh, or to we have a strong network of people, you know, people who are really interested in in branding. People who are starting up. People so who you are created like a hub. Yes. For business persons, yes. business minded people. Yes, sir. And you give them a reason to come to that hub yes, on a sir. daily basis. Yes, sir. Actually, we started that um, from the BBM in those days. I remember been, because yeah. uh, that way back you had been <laughs> broadcasting messages on BBM yes. even before it became popular. Yes. Now, before Android started yeah, using before, yeah, yeah, BBM. Yes, yeah, so we we I I became a very strong influence on BBM then. Uh, I, I couldn't even believe I could be that strong because I had people, you know, I think like almost everywhere in this country, people were looking up to what next I'm going That's to That's like say. blogging, but you weren't using yes, the blog Yes, I wasn't site. using the... You were using a social I was media using site social to media, blog. Yes, to blog. Uh, you, you were blogging on BBM. Yes. And then later on, you migrated to facebook yes Instagram. and then and then we still have a we still have a the normal blog as well uh, i had i i had a blog then which is larrydew.wordpress.com which i normally post things and uh, but uh, i now brought those things into bit and now brought them back into the social media I put it on Facebook, on Instagram. So that's where you market. Yes, Is that the only way you market your business services? Um, for me, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm somebody that likes uh, dealing with reality. I deal with things that works. Yeah. And then I now test the ones that are not working. If it works, if it doesn't work, but I focus on the one that works. Okay. And for us, the one that works the most is Facebook and Instagram. So we focus more of our marketing on Facebook. We don't waste resources on the ones that are not working. Okay. So now, all right. Now you've been able to market and you've been able to get the customers. Yes, sir. So, um, so since, uh, so I, I think I'm going to say that for, for over three or four years, what we've been doing is, is to bring in um, clients from there people contact us so we've never lost our database we have a huge database you know of clients for more than four years now that people have been so we have a very huge one that when we 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 put things together we always have people responding to it people who and people are referring other so people your, to your, 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 your strategy was to first and foremost create like um, a hub yeah. where business-minded persons yeah, have to reason course, to yeah. visit on a yes. daily basis and that helps you to collect data exactly. by which you can viral Ex marketing messages exactly. you know so you don't use traditional adverts no. like television no. radio jingles we've never had newspaper any ads or billboards we never had any advert on uh, on bill, we, we've never had and because it's been just, working for you yes you've decided to stick to it now you've gotten the customers how do you retain them what do you do to keep your customers uh within your bowl and not go elsewhere well um, we try our best to to always give them good prices and discounted prices and uh, at times we have people who who would uh, you know you know i've had clients who who specifically would want to talk to me than to talk to anybody else. So these are things I try you to... You personalize your service. <laughs> yes, you know, I'm the brand and I'm also part of the brand. So uh, uh, I try my best to give people discount, reduce prices, crash prices, and uh, and just make people, you know, to, to get what they want you know, at times I make clients dictate what. So, besides they want to corporate identity, what other things do you do in your organization to um, generate revenue? I think uh, the main thing we we do in our brand is 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 brand building, and that's you know is all we do. Now. Um, the brand landscape, uh, brand management, branding landscape uh, is ubiquitous. It's so large yes, these days. It is. 
How do you, what do you do that makes you to stand out from every other practitioner well, on the landscape? We have a lot of competitors. Yeah. Most especially in Lagos. Yeah. Where they are, they are, they are, they are mighty, they are big, they are well sponsored, they are well financed, more than us. Yeah. We started from scratch and we have these big players there, but we have a niche. And the niche we try to to always work at is we want to have things that they don't have. Uh, uh, let's say, for example, f- uh, I think for over four years now, there's there's a product we have that it's so hard to find except if you come to us. And no, I, I'm interested in those things. <laughs> the brand building landscape is vast. Yes, sir. What has the organization done? to ensure that you stand apart okay. from the crowd? Well, um, I'll give an example. There's a product we have. We call it the transparent business cards. It's not something that is common in Nigeria at all. We started that, or we started producing that uh, in Nigeria fully in 2017. We usually produce them from China before. But uh, we now have to import the equipment from China to Nigeria. And the challenges why I believe a lot of people cannot afford to do that is there are no technicians of this equipment. The materials are not readily available. But we are ready to, to take the risk because we want to stand out. And if you want to stand out, there's a lot of risk attached to it. So in that way, I brought in that equipment and uh, I brought in the materials and we still remain the only brand who is producing the transparent cards, I mean, presently in Nigeria. So that's good news, actually. Yes, sir. sir. What else did you do? We have people doing their, you know, their, their invitation cards, let's say for a wedding, people do it on cards, which is the common one. Yeah. We produce our, we, we, I mean, we have been producing our own invitation cards from plastic. I mean, from transparent plastic. So we do the lesser, we cut it to whatever shape we want to cut it, no matter how fancy we want it to be, we determine that. So we make it fanciful, we put it inside an envelope and it stands out. And it's so rare to find it anywhere, but we produce that right here from Ibadan. So you, you search for ideas that are uncommon. Yes. And that's where you want to stay. That's where I want to stay. Uh, and that is actually where I live. That's where you that's live. That's where I live. And that's been helping your business, yes. your corporate identity yeah. business. I, I still want to touch on you know, customer uh, retention, okay. customer attraction, market expansion, because that's what business is all about. Yes. Business is all about selling. Uh, every other thing is just, you know, just ancillary, as I always put it. Well, the, uh, the, the, the things that we, we pay attention the most is the value of the product that you are, that you are, that you are actually offering to your clients. That is one. Two, is that we try to make the price that you're also offering them affordable. Because if the price is not affordable, it's not easy for you to keep clients. No matter how good your your product is, if clients cannot afford it, they can't stay. They will rather look for you know another option. But we do it in such a way that we create different standards of prices so that they don't have to go elsewhere. No matter what you you can afford, you can choose to, okay, if I can afford this grade, let me go for this grade at least. It is much better. So you better try than... to be competitive and relevant in your pricing strategy. Yes. That has also We helped. are competing with ourselves in pricing. So, we, I mean, if we have, okay, let's say, for example, we have different types of business cards. We have business cards from 1,000 naira for 100 pieces. So it doesn't really mean that you can't say, I cannot afford it, I want to go elsewhere. Where else will you get business cards from 1,000 naira? Okay, so we created that in such a way that you don't have to go to another place. 
coming up. For me, I'm a very detailed person. There are some silly mistakes that I see on CVs. You know, I love to assume that if you're looking for a job, there's only one ticket you have to get a job, and which is your CV. If you can't pay attention to that little document. Yeah, that's lucky. Yes. It is one of the things that I can even so let's that assume can disqualify. That. How do you handle customer dissatisfaction? Because it couldn't have been that everyone well, you have serviced in the <laughs> past were satisfied with yeah. your service. Yeah, we face that a lot of times. And, you know, especially when you are dealing with people you, you are not seeing. We have trust issues in Nigeria. And uh, even at times, it is not because they are not, they are not even satisfied with the product. It's because they think, you know, as they paid, and they cannot hear from you for a second. They believe that you've done the way... Because when people work. check you out online yeah. and they pick the product they want yeah. and they give you their brief online, yeah. they have to pay before you start. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, and you know, and you know, because we have a lot of people, we are also trying to, to process their orders. If some people don't hear from us, you know, for like, you know, an hour, they believe there's something... Maybe you scam them. <laughs> yeah, maybe you scam them. But uh, some of the strategies we are using uh, is that we've incorporated a way that we can pull up our reviews from, you know, from our social media. We pull them up to, to stream on directly on the website. So it's easy for people to see that we have people who we've served and, and, and uh, you know, and they've, you know, they've expressed themselves on the way we serve. So, so them. you you pull out your reviews and testimonials. Yes. From previous clients. Yes. From yes. From time to time. No, it is a stream directly from the social media. It goes. It just. Is it, it there twenty four seven? Yes, it's there twenty four seven. Two four seven. Yes, there. So all the so reviews if, and testimonials you you've ever a, gotten. If you drop a review now, within that same one minute or one second, you are seeing it on the website. On the website. Yes. So the strategy you have adopted for um, giving assurances to yes. potential clients or clients, clients yes. that yes. may be agitated yes. over. Not seeing you physically. Yes, it is the you have those testimonials yes. constantly being projected yes, from your social media page. Yes, sir. That's that's quite creative. Yes, sir. But what else do you do? You were about telling me because the question I asked you really is not okay. about clients who um, have doubts. Okay. Yes. Uh, the question okay. I asked you, you is about, about ones that are not those you have serviced and were dissatisfied. Okay. Um, well, we have different issues. There are some that are not happy, and uh, the most of the challenges we have is in shipping, which is the career of the things that we've produced to our clients. And uh, in, in most occasions, it is not what we did not do well. It's about what the career services had, you know, had, had uh, destroyed so if there was for delay. us. Or delays maybe, or, dist uh, or destruction of the things that we have produced. The materials well. that they have produced and yeah, sent and to we'll send. clients. I will give an example. There was a day we produced, I think, a wall clock for a client. And we did everything that we could do to protect it. But on delivery, the person, you know, removed it from the parcel and saw some of the harms of the wall clock broken. And the person said, this is not what you showed me in the picture when you snapped to me. Now, when I'm getting it, it's broken. Naturally. Now, look at that. It's not, you know, it's not a fault. Well, it was not my own business. It, and it's not your business. I, I didn't pay for so, a broken So, clock. these are some of the challenges we face. In some instances, we and had to... And they had to rake for you. Yes, a lot. We so, face that a lot. Yeah. And uh, it, it's, so when, when such situation arises, yeah, how we, do you handle? We it? have to. We have to. Uh, in some cases, we reproduce. We reproduce and we send. That now is now on our own expenses. 
now that your operation has expanded, yeah. you can't do it all anymore as yes. you were <laughs> want to <laughs> do in the early yeah. days. Yes, How do you recruit? We have some online uh, recruitment portals that we throw in our, you know, I mean, we, we put in those applications or the vacancies into, and we pay them in you know in order for them to put it up on their sites and then uh people usually um you know throwing their cvs to them we receive them by emails yeah and we have people uh, i mean we have our hr department who work at screening okay screening and uh, they do the short listing how do you screen well, we have some criteria that we do look yeah, at. Yeah, tell us about those criteria. Okay, um, for example, from the applications, we need to see a well-written English. Okay. For me, I'm a very detailed person. If you have a CV and I'm seeing mistakes on your CV, I'm not talking about you know seeing mistakes that are not quite obvious. There are some silly mistakes that I see on CVs. I... I you know, I love to assume that if you're looking for a job, there's only one ticket you have to get a job, and which is your CV. If you can't pay attention to that little document... Yeah, that's sloppy. Yes. It is one of the things that I can even... So let's that assume disqualify. that you've screened all of the various applicants. You found maybe about 10 or 11 yes. of them qualified. How do you see through that? Well, it's always very challenging, but we invite them. And at the interviews, um, there are so many there are so many things uh, we we look at in in how they're able to you know how they're able to. We don't really look at dressing because even in our office, our dressing is casual. We yeah. don't. Uh, so, don't what do you look out for? We usually look out for uh, the way they're able to because I actually. I, I actually need to put them through pressure to see how they react to different uh, to different scenarios of things. If this happens, what are you going to do? Okay, so you use case studies. Yes. So I, you know, I try that. I try to destabilize them in such a way that I want to see if they if they have ability to flare up on some things or this and that. So I usually look at it like I see if I'm the client. And then I want something. I want to see how you're responding to it, how yeah. you're responding to that. And with that, I'm able to get a satisfactory. Re uh, if I'm able to get a satisfactory response, and I, I believe that person would be the best candidate. How do you prospect for big clients? It's not everyone that comes knocking on your door from your website. Yes. Um, well, just like I said, you do cold calls or you No, we don't. Um, so everyone we, you serviced approached you through your online yes, platforms or usually referrals referrals. Um, we don't use, we don't have in our plan to go for the big guns. It's not in our. It is not in our vision. Mm. The vision we have is for starters. Startups. Yes, yes, for startups. Um, for for people who usually needs our specialty in terms of starting well and starting big. Yeah. We also have. Uh, you know, a way that we, you know, we provide the things that they need. Let's say, for example, if you're starting now and you're starting small and you have the money to get a big building, it's actually, it's actually starting up as well. Yeah. And you want to put the whole thing, put big billboards out and all that. We are capable of handling, I mean, all that. And how come I can understand your evolution from logo designs corporate identity brand building how you evolved in that process yes. that i can understand is logical for me but e-commerce is a totally different ball game entirely okay how did you get into e-commerce i know that you had the vision once upon a time yeah that's off what you were evolving from? Well, um, 
it's even very very uh, weird to have a branding uh, firm and you have a e-commerce in the branding firm um, that just shows the kind of way that I think of solving problems in the same sphere that people think this might not be possible yeah I looked at it as bringing branding to the lowest of the lowest of you don't need to have two million to have a logo designed for you by professionals you don't now we bring down we actually if we need to design logos there are lots of process that's supposed to be done and all that but for someone who is just starting you know a brand today and doesn't really need all of those things and cannot afford two million the idea is let us split the two million that one person is supposed to pay let's split it into maybe probably an hundred or two thousand and then we treat it one after the other at the same time we will use in covering for one person we cover it for two thousand and we still get the value of all one so but isn't it. that more work for you yes it is but we feel more fulfilled because if we had given two thousand people the same offer we have more two thousand more people coming back to us True, for more true. things so it usually look like it is more work but eventually it's helpful to us because we have more clients than somebody who just treated one person and gained two million and you may not get another the, uh, exactly. person like and that had, for another and month we, and we're and going to have months. more referrals from those ones that we've served than for the person who, who have just served do you have person. a fear that startups might dry up someday uh, I don't believe so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, don't believe, believe so, so. myself. <laughs> I don't believe and so. And I don't pray so. <laughs> I I mean, because so. that's the future that's of the, the world. That's the future, exactly. Uh, before we let you go, tell us what the future picture that you are pursuing well, presently uh, is like. Um, well, for now, um, I think the future we, we see, or that I can see that I see presently, is uh, we we are we are going to take over more space, and uh, it's not going to be just in Nigeria anymore because we are we are already seeing we are, we are already perceiving that um, people outside this country will notice us. And we have you started servicing people outside this country? Definitely, we are. So over the last how many years have you been doing that? Uh, over the last uh, three years. We have clients, in fact, it's, I don't know how it's happening. We are having more clients from from Niger Republic. I mean, even down, we are having from from Kano State. And, uh, yeah, because you're online. Yes, because you're online. So, um, and uh, I, I, I see more coming soon because we have acquired the future that i'm seeing made us to acquire equipment that we know that we'll be able to serve them so we we, we are re we are ready for it and we know that in the next uh, 10 years we will be well recognized everywhere around the world everywhere yes. around the world that's a very tall order yes. and you are very confident I'm that very that will be achieved that. on that very optimistic level i want very to say <laughs> Thank you so much. Well Thank done. You. Thank you so much. To you and your team. Thank you so much. And uh, I want to say that you are a pride to the African continent Thank you, sir. and to this nation. Thank you, sir. And we're proud of you. Thank you so much. And what you're doing for startups around the country. Thank well, you, I appreciate you for coming on the it's program, my Mr. Larry Dew. Thank you so much. And uh, we appreciate you, our viewers over there, for being there with us. Until next time, bye bye.